July 20th, 1969, 40 years ago today. That was the day Apollo 11 landed on the moon and Walter Cronkite was at the anchor desk. The date's now indelible. We have a lift off. What a moment. Man on the way to the moon. It's going to be remembered as long as man survives. July 20th, 1969. The day man reached the eagle has landed. and walked on the moon. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Boy. <laughs> okay, we're going to be busy for a minute. There's a foot coming down. There he right? is. Yeah. There's a foot coming down the steps. The least of us is improved by the things done by the best of us because if we are not able to land, at least we are able to uh, follow. Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins are the best of us, and they've led us further and higher than we ever imagined we were likely to go. We have three of the best of us joining us from NASA headquarters in Washington, Buzz Aldrin, along with Alan Bean and Charlie Duke. They are respectively the second, fourth, and tenth men to walk on the moon. That must feel pretty cool. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Colonel Aldrin, let me begin with you. We can't remember your amazing accomplishment 40 years ago today without also mentioning Walter Cronkite. What do you think was his contribution to the space program? He, uh, Walter was a very supportive person of the space program and he has continued after uh, the missions to the moon, he's continued to support the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation uh, and, and all the early people. Uh, he's been on a lot of boards. He's been always uh, a very firm supporter of the space program. He obviously wanted to fly in the shuttle as a journalist in space. Unfortunately, he didn't get that opportunity. Uh, I'm sure he wanted to be here with us today on the 40th anniversary. He didn't get that opportunity either. It's a sad day, but it's a great day for, for us uh, as we look at 40 years ago and chart a course for 40 years in the future. We remember Walter Cronkite was giddy when the Eagle landed, and so was America. And the consensus now from uh, space enthusiasts is that that excitement is not there anymore. Let me turn to you, Captain, being the fourth man to walk on the moon on Apollo 12. How do, how do we get that excitement back? Well, I think it's mostly up to the media. It's my observation that what the media talks about and says is exciting is what the public thinks is exciting. So we hope that you feel, the media feels, that going to Mars is the next big challenge and that we will actually um, benefit from it. We think so. We think it's a great idea and it will help America be better next year than last year and 10 years from now than now. But it's up to you. You're the ones yeah. that sort of control the excitement level of, of the whole world, really. Well, we will, we will do our best because this is certainly an exciting anniversary. Let me bring in General Duke. Can you just tell us what it was like to walk on the moon? Uh, it was, uh, of course, the most exciting uh, flight I'd ever had, one of the most exciting adventures uh, in my life. Uh, we were six hours late landing, and so when we actually landed and looked out across, uh, uh, to me, an incredibly beautiful lunar landscape that was unlike anything I'd ever seen before, we landed in the mountains of the moon, and it was very, very rough, uh, rolling hills, craters, rocks, everywhere. and. It, and as I stepped onto the moon, uh, I was almost overwhelmed uh, with the excitement of it all. And uh, that continued for 71 hours for John and me. Uh, we were just like little, two little kids at Christmas. It was so exciting to, <laughs> you know, every time you went over a little ridge, you were wondering what you're going to see next. And, uh, and so it was that kind of adventure uh, for us for 71 hours. 71 hours, which is a record, by the way. Colonel yeah. Aldrin, I know that you're meeting with the president later today, along with the other two Apollo 11 astronauts, and you are going to pitch That's Mars as the next mission. Why Mars? Well, we're certainly not ignoring the moon. We have a space station. We need to keep it going. We need to invite more nations, spacefaring nations, on board the space station. We need to build an international partnership so that international partnership can be transferred to lunar 
activities with an international lunar economic development corporation authority. We've done those sort of things before. Uh, and, and then what we can do is uh, take our experience of having been on the moon 40 years ago and the last four years of planning to go back there and share that with the internationals so they can expend their resources on their rockets going to the moon. We expended our resources on the International Space Station. Now I think it's turn time for us to chart a pathway, a gradual pathway, a little more than two decades instead of the one decade to get to the moon. We have much to do and many ways to accomplish those step by step. And they're very exciting things. It's, it, uh, I see your, your enthusiasm. Maybe, going back to the moon again. I, I feel your enthusiasm and your excitement still 40 years later. So please, Colonel Aldrin, the last word on your anniversary. Your, what is the most memorable moment of that day 40 years ago? Absolutely. It was the gateway to further exploration. It was the few seconds that we had touching down, shutting the engine off, and looking out. We both looked at each other, and I patted him on the shoulder. That's how I recall it. He recalls shaking hands. But whatever it was, it was that opening up of the threshold of exploration. We develop places we've explored. We explore places we haven't been to. Mars we have not been to yet. Buzz Aldrin, Alan Bean, Charles Duke, gentlemen, thank you so much for your contribution and for your time this morning.